Now I'm going to shift gears and, and in the next five to ten minutes say one more thing. As a beginning stage of this, he is coming to encourage and refire the church. Especially, especially leaders. Many of whom are weary. What's the word I'm looking for? Some just need a fresh encounter with the Lord. I don't care who you are, you go through seasons where life happens. And you don't have to be a bad person or someone that's living in sin or that doesn't love the Lord anymore for him to come to you and say, I need you to return to first love. You don't have, has that ever happened to me? Absolutely, it's happened to me. So God is coming to the church to visit us in ways that won't be don't expect it to come through hellfire and brimstone messages saying, you bunch of, you bunch of sorry, lukewarm people, uh, turn or burn, you know. That's not, that's not what's coming. What's coming is Abba. Daddy. Jesus, our friend, our savior, our lover, that what's coming is he is coming to embrace his people and say, look, we're about to see something incredible. I need you. We're going to work together. Before that happens, I'm just going to, I'm going to revitalize. I'm going to refresh. I'm going to break off of you the stuff that's gotten, you know, dumped on you over this last season. I'm going to baptize you afresh and new in my Holy Ghost and fire, and you're going to become my arrow that I drop on this part of the country. And one of my friends, and one, another one of these prophetic friends that sends me dreams, he said three dreams in the last two or three months uh, about God reopening wells of revival. And one of those wells is a place uh, where a man mini- uh, named Tennant, T-E-N-N-E-N-T, ministered. Tennant was one of the uh, men God used in the first Great Awakening, in the mid and earlier, uh, first half, let's say, of the 1700s. He was a contemporary of Whitfield and Jonathan Edwards. But Tennant's burden and the message God used him to preach and trumpet was toward the clergy. And he said to them, you need a fresh baptism of fire. He said to some of them, you're not even saved. And it was true in that day. Some of them were just professionals. Well, we have it today too. But for others, it wasn't that they weren't saved. It was that They needed a fresh baptism of fire. And one of these dreams, this is on one of my posts. In the dream, the the well erupted again with fire shooting into the sky. And he saw people coming by the thousands with pieces of wood and they they held the wood to the fire until it was burning and then they ran home uh, and began to, and started fires representing revival where they had come from. But in the dream, he knew that the piece of wood they brought was from their pulpits that they had busted up before they came and they brought a piece of it to the tenant well of revival until it caught fire and they went back to their homes home churches with pulpits ablaze and the fires of revival spring up there. He just had another dream about this same well 
a dream that I've never sh- I haven't shared. I'm going to be sharing it over the next two or three days on the post. But this one is about I, I he and I went to a place in this dream to re-enlist people into what God was about to do because they were they'd become in their minds and the minds of many in the church disqualified because of failures and things that had happened and we found them in a bar but the name of the bar and the dream (laughs) when the Lord does this stuff it's just like it was called Tenants Tavern and Well and they were there just doing nothing and he and I showed up you'll love this dream when you can hear the whole thing because we were desperate for more workers and we came in and I said hey give me your attention in here I'm here to enlist you for the excavating of a river and the third great awakening and one of them said our cups are dry and we're forsaken we can't help you and I stepped back and began to prophesy. I release the fire and the, and, the, and the wine of the Spirit to fill those cups in front of you. Drink it and meet me outside. You can't make that stuff up. They drank that new wine and came outside transformed and said, we're ready to go to work. I'm leaving here today, and I'm going to New Jersey, which was already planned. And then the guy who had the dream called me, had the dreams about tenant. He didn't know who tenant was when he had the dreams. I didn't either. But the guy who had the dream called me and said, you know where we're going to be is only 20 minutes from where tenant ministered. Maybe you should come a day early and we should go there and just drink from that well maybe even do a service where we prophesy and decree to the nation that the fire of God is coming to the church to fall on leaders to those that are tired and weary that God's about to pour out his spirit on us so he can use us to do it out there come on so that's what I'm going to do tomorrow night listen Just go outside and listen. You might hear me prophesying over Las Vegas tomorrow night. And I'm going to finish with this. I'm going to pray. I believe in accountability. I believe that leaders are supposed to be held to a high standard. But I do not like a theology that says if a leader falls or fails, God can never use them again. I don't like that. Some people, Christians, believe that God can do for an unbeliever what he can't do for one of his own kids. And that is to cleanse them with the blood of Jesus to the point that he doesn't even remember it anymore. It's almost like we think the person that comes and gets saved, he separates their sins from them as far as the east is from the west and doesn't remember it anymore. But what if one of his own kids comes and needs to repent and get cleaned up that God said, well, I can't forgive you to that level. Well, I don't believe it. And while I do believe that we must walk and live in integrity, and righteousness and have accountability. I do believe that. But I'm telling you, God is coming to a lot of people that feel like they're disqualified and he's going to baptize them fresh, new, and Holy Spirit. And you're going to see them start preaching. 
God's going to use them to work signs and wonders. I tell you, there are prophets right now that are still living under bridges. There's some evangelists of the future that are shooting up today. But what God's about to do is glorious enough that they're going to be transformed, delivered, set free. And some of them are going to be able to be used by him fairly quickly. Some of them are already cleaned up. They just live under so much condemnation they don't think God could ever use them again. 